Welcome back to the show, everybody. I want to show you all what Senior and I have been working on the last uh, day or two. I think we did it. We've got the front bolster pretty solid on the table here. We've got two good side mounts. We've got a good front mount. We've got, um, we used a similar jacking system on four points underneath it to get it leveled. These carriage bolts were just some uh, kickstands, if you will, that we ran down and had this uh, supported with back here. And we just kept them in place once we had uh, finished with them. We rolled them up in there and we'll have them handy for when we need to take this back out. So I'm not sure I'm going to trust it to do the full extension sweep side to side. That ends up being a lot of weight that's going to be hanging out well past the main base. But first things first, we've got all the really bad holes that need attention circled here. Except for worst case scenario crater back there, that one pretty much uh, declares on its own. Um, we'll get these bolt holes rehabbed, then we will worry about doing the milling once again on this gasket surface. And to get back to the comment section beneath the prior episode, there were a lot of the exact same question that were posted over and over and over again. Uh, just remember everyone, you know, comments are good for the algorithm, I'm not knocking that, but when it comes to questions, yes, the comment section can be used as a one-to-one -one direct link between me and you, but I have up to 76,000 potential viewers and only one of me, so it gets so lopsided, I can't answer the same question every time it's posted. So sometimes 30 seconds worth of scrolling, you'll find several answers to something that you were already about to type yourself. That being said, uh, a lot of the same question uh, regarding like, why didn't you try a left-handed drill bit? Why didn't you try an easy out? Why didn't you try penetrating oil and heat? Why didn't you weld the nut? Why didn't you slit, blow the nut out with a torch? Why didn't you, on and on and on. Well, a little bit of catch up time for y'all. We tried every trick in the book when we were taking the broken bolts out of that bolster tank. Senior and I have both spent our entire working careers as mechanics in a rust belt state. We have removed our fair share of rusted and broken fasteners. That's not saying we're the best in the world, there's always somebody better, but neither him nor I were prepared for how tightly rusted all the bolts were on X231 when it had to do with this radiator system. So I've got a video about when we were trying to save these threaded holes back in the X231 playlist a ways. I think that was in 2019, but, um, we didn't have a lot of luck and we tried everything okay so we drilled the pilot and then took it out to the root diameter and then with custom punches tried to peel threads out and then remove the remainder with a tap that's actually how we broke the tap right here and ended up with you know crater mode um we weren't going to try to blast anything out with a cut and torch not in a 10x casting we've both done it but just in case something went wrong we've already got enough problems here we didn't need to make any more for ourselves. Uh, we actually tried to do the uh, weld the nut and hope that the heat from the welding would loosen some of the rust and we could twist it out. The nuts just kept shearing over and over again and then that created an another problem for us. The heat from the repeated welding actually hardened the bolts and it hardened the surrounding cast. So then we had really bad scenarios like here and here and these where the bolt was so hard we couldn't get a good drill down the center. It started wandering to the side and then we end up with uh, a threaded hole that we kind of saved but you get this which is still no good so that's why we have to go and repair every one of these that has been circled with a paint pen all right so when we got into the top tank in the last episode that's why i went directly to sacrificing the bolt and the threads and just going straight to a helicoil threaded insert. Uh, we cut straight to the chase. We didn't take that whole big, long, tedious, problem-filled road around when the path was gonna lead to this right here anyhow. So that's why we've got a lot of really bad holes to repair right there. And as far as all the tools of the trade, this was my I'm having a bad day drawer at work. We've got the left hand bits, we've got the spiral shank easy outs, we've got the straight shank easy outs, we've got the internal grab easy outs, we've got the external grab easy outs, we've got the fancy cam lock for the broken studs, we've even got the cam over for the larger studs. Been there, done that, used all this stuff quite a lot, but I can assure you, none of it was going to work 
right here or on that top tank. So now that you all are caught up, let's get to work. We started with the one that I was most nervous about. I went back and watched the old uh, video that we did. This one was uh, one that we knew had hardened up pretty good from the welding. Um, the very, like the first sixteenth of an inch at the top seemed rather hard. After that, I started getting a lot more consistent chips. So we'll get down to the bottom of that. Check it out for depth. Yeah, we're pretty good. All right, I have stepped up to the finishing size bit. This is a 25 64 because I'm going to start out with the thin wall keen insert inserts here. They require a uh, 7 16 by 14 thread. And the 25 64 is the bit you need to start for these because they are a shallower thread. That's a bit oversized for a typical 7 16 by 14. That's what these require. And another thing too I like about these, uh, these keen certs, I can start out trying to use the thin wall because that will take care of the majority of these holes um, and clean them up and round them out. But in case we have a lot of hard material, that removes more of it than just a thinner helicoil wood. So hopefully it gets most of the really nasty stuff out of my way and then I don't have to deal with it later. And um, if it seems like a thin wall, keen cert is not going to work. I've also got the thicker ones here too so we can take it out a little bit further and those are suited for half by 13 thread. But I'm thinking the thin wall ones are gonna get us by. So we'll finish size the hole now that we've rounded it out. And of course, run the tap all the way to the bottom, centering it with the chuck, just the same way we did it on the top tank. It keeps everything nice and square. So this is the 7 16 by 14 thread, and we'll test fit the insert. Should be a good fit, yes. Threading in very well. Good depth on it. And you are also supposed to countersink these in just a little bit. In this case, I am not. I want the insert to end up being flush with the gasket surface after we do the milling. And also when we install these, there's a driving tool that seats all four of these um, stakes around the perimeter. Also helps to lock the insert in. It can't back out, can't move after that. So that was one of the holes that I was nervous about. Like I said, went pretty well. So Let's just keep moving on down the line. This cutoff 5 16 bolt has actually been one of the handiest tools I've had for this whole project. I can use that for a, an initial centering guide as well. Figure out where the original center of the hole was and then just uh, slip fit on the chuck. And then you can lock the tables down You're right where you need to be. And once again, test a new insert. And you guys have a pretty good idea what the routine is by now. So I'm just going to keep doing the same process over and over here until we work our way through all the marked holes. I'll bring you back. Okay, everybody, catch you all up on what has happened since I last had the camera on. As you can see, I've been plenty busy. So. I put the inserts in all six of the circled holes first because I knew those were the worst. And then I still had a few left over. So I scrutinized all the threaded holes again, very closely this time. And the ones I put the X's on were the ones that required no further work. But uh, I, I did throw 
inserts in these two as well. This one was just loose enough. This one, the bolt wasn't quite square. Both of these were just loose enough. So that means we've got 10 of the thin wall key inserts put into the bottom tank. The rest of the bolt holes are good, except for our crater, our worst case scenario where we broke that tap in the corner and things quickly spiraled out of control. And I thought I had remembered this crater as being quite a ways off center from the rest of the holes, but now that I look at it from both directions, it doesn't look like it's that far out. So I had an elaborate plan of uh, taking that UD front bolster that from the tractor we just scrapped a couple episodes back and uh, knocking a chunk of the bolster off so I could make a, a Minneapolis Moline cast iron slug that I could then round that out, thread it, and thread that slug in, Dutch key it, pen it in place, drill a new hole. But now that I look at this, I, I wanna see if one of the thicker wall key inserts that I have just might fill that gap. So I'm gonna throw you on the mag mount here and we're gonna do this unedited, uncut, raw, just, you know, stream of consciousness type thing. So I've got my paper template gasket I made of the production 445 bottom tank and the bolt holes along here are the same. The gasket is just a little longer from that other tank being a different size, but I can use this to establish close enough where the old center was up in this corner. So I can throw a couple of bolts in here. This corner one is an insert that is not staked yet, but it's going to hold us close enough. The center one is an original hole, so we know that's a good location. And to keep everything from moving around down here, because you know that 445 tank was wider, but I can just align that bolt hole and that's going to hold that with the magnets. So that should be our old center. Let's see if we can find that. I've got my uh, centering guide in the chuck yet, so we can run that down, get it close. Crank table over. And we can just use that in conjunction with the hole in the gasket. And I, that's gonna get us close enough to at least uh, see if maybe we can just get by with an insert and not have to make our own cast iron slug. The slug would be good for the video feed, but the insert would be good for me. <laughs> it saved me a lot of hassle. So, okay, roll it that way a little bit. In and out's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to consider that centered on our hole. So we can take these bolts out. And then we'll see how close we are. All right. So we run our stud down. You know, really, that doesn't look bad. Um, let me find. I've got a thicker wall, yeah, thicker wall insert right here. I can throw that on our stud. Okay, get you all a little bit better view. So if I run this down with the insert on it, that's gonna give us a pretty good idea if that insert is going to take up that hole. And you know what? I think we stand half of a chance here. Hmm. That is not bad. I think we can just do it. I think we can just do it. Yeah, looking down into the bottom of it, it's nasty in there, but it cones in smaller and smaller as it goes down, and our insert is already the same size as the top. If I can drill it and get threads in there, it, it should work. So I'm gonna start with this end mill. It's kind of a round point four flute. We should be able to go in and start just making it cylindrical again. Take a lot of that rough, bumpy stuff out of the bottom, and then we'll step up from there. Well, we made it all the way to the bottom with the end mill, so now we're back to drill bits. Because my end mill size selection is not unlimited, um, but in this case, we're still gonna be doing an interrupted cut, meaning we're not cutting evenly all the way around. We'll cut kind of primarily to this one third of, you know, the revolution to this side. 
And then by the time we get to the bottom, we're going to be three quarters to almost a full revolution, but there'll still be a skip. So uh, I keep old drill bits around just for this purpose. I've cut this one off custom length and uh, put a brand new edge on it because a shorter drill bit is going to have less deflection, less chance of breakage. Everything's going to be uh, more rigid all around. So we'll just feed it easy. We're just taking it up a step in size. We're still nowhere near where we need to be for the tap yet, so that's good. Just creep up on it little bits at a time. And once again, we've found the bottom of the hole. It's starting to round out. It's looking a lot better. So I'm bumping it up all the way to the, uh, the finish drill diameter before the tap. So uh, another custom length, new edge on it, nice and sharp. But we've got one area that's concerning me just a little bit. Set you all down so I can do some show and, show and tell right here. So we've got kind of where it's, it's beveled at the top right here, but then just below that, right off the end of the screwdriver, it's a lot shinier and it gets a little bit darker. And that seems to be a hard spot in the cast, most likely generated by the uh, some of our prior indiscretions when we were trying to save what we should have just abandoned and went straight to drilling anyway. But um, the last bit squeaked quite a lot on there, so it'll be interesting to see if this uh, if this new one gets past that or if it just wipes the edge right off of it. Either way, we'll deal with it. But it's not quite as bad down there in the bottom as it started out as. So we'll load the second bit, see what happens. That is hammering pretty hard. Getting down to, yeah, we're getting down to that spot. So I'm gonna pull this bit, check the edge. Oh, it seems all right. Still, we'll reevaluate. Proceed from there. Well, we found the bottom, but it's definitely hard cast up at the top. After I finally punched through that first quarter of an inch, which involved me resharpening the bit twice to do it, then it just cut normally. But uh, the squeaking noise you heard, that was the uh, the side flutes on that uh, on that just this initial spot right up here at the top. So that makes me a bit nervous for the tap, but um, worst case scenario, I'm not against putting the Dremel in there with a very small stone and just taking some of that uh, hard material off and just allowing the flutes of the tap to go right by. We'll still have good grab on the rest of it staked in besides. I think we still have a workable solution. Okay, everybody, two hours later, and having wiped out two separate taps, we have an insert that will go easily into the bottom tank right here. And uh, finally, I went to this uh, heavy duty three flute. Yeah, that's that's the one that finally powered through all the hardened cast up there at the top. So, uh, and actually that hole rounded out pretty well, all things considered. So we're good threads, good concentric hole down, plenty deep to hold the insert. So that means 11 out of the 20 bolt holes here needed to have inserts put in, but we'll take all of these out now because once again, we are going to uh, mill this surface before we make any of these permanent. And then we'll have the depth established where these all have to end up. So we'll offer up the tool steel sacrifice to the great Christine. She doesn't let you have anything for free, but lately, as long as she's been getting fresh steel, boy, she has been cooperative. So this is good enough to go back in the kit. And um, I'm gonna save this corner here for last because I know we've got a real hard pocket right there. I'll finish everything else. Hopefully won't have any problems. And then we'll see what we have to do to address that. Now we're 
approaching the hard spot. Let's see what happens. Should be the worst of it right here. I think we got it. Sorry about that. <laughs> Finish doesn't look look any worse for wear. That's why I decided to go with that end mill, that big 5 8 right off the bat instead of my uh, my other cutter because I've had much better luck with that and if I was going to ruin anything, that's the cheaper of the, the two. So probably just one final just polish pass with the other cutter and call her good. give you all a view of our leveling jacks that we used. Put them in the bolt holes for the lower steering mechanism. 5 8 threaded rod with a jam nut and we just got a coupling nut down here on the bottom. So once the threaded rod bottomed out in the hole, you just work the jam nut and the coupling nut to run everything up and down. Worked pretty well. And finally we can walk through installing one of the inserts. Once again, these are the key inserts. They have those four stakes built onto them that help to lock it in place. But step number one is going to be just checking the depth. And I've said before, they want you to countersink these just a bit. I chose not to because I want them to be about flush with the surface and that's perfect right there. So I'll run it out and I'll show you how these stakes work. So they've got four little channels that they run in that are cut down the outside of the insert and Basically, they're only as deep as what the threads are. So after you seat the insert, you drive those stakes down and they just interfere with the threads in the parent material, in this case, the radiator tank, and that's what's going to lock those in place. But I'll also give them a little bit of help with just a dab of Loctite, just to get a good drop in the threads, okay. So the insert can push that on down as it goes. So we can throw it in for the final time. Run it down. We already know that once it stops moving, we're about flush, but I'll give it just a little bit, a little bit of a cinch right there. So we have a driver tool that's included with the kit. This is what it is, pretty simple deal. So we've got uh, the sliding collar. And we've got the shoulder right here and the peg. So the peg end goes into the threaded portion of the insert and the shoulder right there is what actually drives the four stakes in and this sleeve just keeps them captured so that they don't splay out. And as you drive it on down, the sleeve just floats up. So pretty simple setup. And this is just into cast iron, so it's not going to take a lot of force to seat those stakes. 
You can have a look, you can see they're already shorter. We'll finish driving them home. There, sharp wrap. You know they're there. Final check I'll do is I'll take this steel rule and I'll just make sure, yep, none of the stakes are standing up proud. It slides right over the top. No catches or hangups. So that's all you've got to do. Continue on down the line until they're all in. You drill 16 holes and what do you get? A clip tall buzz and you ain't finished yet. Okay everybody, I know this looks a little bit funny, but I'm performing a test. Um, a couple people in the comment section have asked how accurate our cheap China mill slash drill is. These are not the best piece of equipment in the world, but um, quick backstory on this one. Uh, a neighbor gave this to us because it had been in a garage fire. It didn't get hot enough to really hurt anything. It just kind of bowed this plastic face a little bit, but it had sat outside for a couple of years after that, got really rusty and he was getting ready to scrap it. So he gave it to us. We said, we'd try and do something with it. So over the next couple of years, senior and I, mostly senior, uh, just refurbished this whole thing, made sure everything was tight, right, adjusted, fresh coat of paint. So. A couple people have uh, wondered like how tight the gibs are on, you know, in the ways here and on the table and everything because uh, these are known for having a little bit of slack and everything. Well, we've got this one set pretty tight, but um, like having so much weight on this, like that bolster, when you'd run this table all the way out to the extreme edge and that weight hangs over, if there was any play, that table, and my phone goes off, if there's any play, that table would start to drop on this edge and then it would do the same on the other end, it would drop. So that means your workpiece is not sliding flat under your cutter, it's doing this. So each end would drift up and basically you'd be left with a high spot in the center instead of it being flat. So I've proved these out with my straight edge, but this is the best test I can do on camera of both at the same time. I've placed the mating surfaces on top of one another. I had to throw the top tank backwards because remember we've got that 50 thousandths uh, drop uh, behind those bosses right there. So to get it to lay flat, I had to lay them like this. But you'll see there is no air gap between the two and they don't, they don't even click any way that I can exert pressure upon them. So if we had double high spots in the center, that top piece would rock kind of like a teeter-totter right now. So. That's the prove out for the machine, which I'm very happy with. Now, it's been a long day, but uh, we've got a top tank with a good surface, good bolt holes. We've got a bottom, bottom tank, good surface, good bolt holes. Both of them sealed. This will have to dry tonight. So, all that's left is everything that goes between the two. That's this bench right here. So tomorrow, we'll pick a piece, start working. Thank you for watching everyone. Glad to have this step behind me. I was not looking forward to dealing with all of those really stubborn holes. Um, I think everything turned out very well. We're gonna wrap it up here for the day and I hope to see y'all back again. Still can't believe that thick wall insert completely filled that old crater. Got lucky.